I've decided to make a coffee table out of a motorcycle engine. In the first half of this project, I showed you where my inspiration came from and what I hope to replicate, but with a motorcycle twist. We went engine shopping and found a bike addict's holy grail that included the perfect engine for the job, a Honda VFR 400 V4. I cleaned it up a bit and tore it down to the last bolt to get the parts I need. I then came up with a bit of a game plan and ran into a few issues which is what we have to figure out today. But I'll link the first video down below so you can see everything you missed. So I just got my engine cases, pistons on conrods and cylinder heads back from getting vapor blasted and they look brand new. Vapor blasting is kind of like a mixture of pressure washing and sandblasting. They use an abrasive media in a stream of high pressure water. And this combination is great for taking contaminants off the surface of engine parts without damaging the part itself and is something I've always wanted to experiment with. It got all the old and ugly black paint off that was scratched and now it's down to the bare metal which is the look I wanted. And it also got rid of all the carbon buildup on the valves and pistons so that they don't look like they had years of abuse back in the 90s. I didn't even bother disconnecting the pistons from the conrods because this is how I plan on using them. I did want to remove the valves from the heads before vapor blasting but I don't actually have a tool to compress valve springs. But either way, this is how I plan on displaying them in their final form so it doesn't actually matter. But now we have to go and have a look in the past to see my plan for the base of this table because vapor blasting took longer than I expected and I didn't want to just sit around. Currently the engine parts are still out getting vapor blasted and cleaned up, but I did get something that we can make progress on in the meantime. Eddie, who is one of my neighbors here in this business park, was kind enough to give me these two pieces of reclaimed wood. They kind of look like they might have been railway sleepers at some point in their lives. Maybe not, but whatever they were in a past life, they should be perfect for my coffee table base. I asked if he could put them through his wood planer for me to take the tops off and clean them up a bit, but he was adamant that they have character just like this. And to be honest, he's right. They're definitely hipster enough just the way they are to be part of an engine coffee table. He also suggested that I clean them up with a wire brush and then I could stain or paint them if I fancied. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The wire brush knocked off the dust and cobwebs so that I could stain the two pieces in a dark mahogany. It's only a little darker than they already were, but it should look newer and complement the raw metal color of the engine nicely. In hindsight, I should only have stained the base much later on, but I was excited to make some easy progress. It was a challenge to join the two pieces in a way that would be strong and neat, since the gap between them wasn't very consistent. But a mixture of a dowel pin where you won't see it and wood glue got the job started. I also added these little height adjustable feet so that the base is slightly off the ground. And more importantly, I can compensate for my skew base if needed. And finally, I added some aluminium reinforcement strips for peace of mind. But back in the present, I was already running into issues. Even just loosely reassembling the engine cases and attaching the cylinder heads had a curveball because all the bolt holes were now filled with the abrasive media used during vapor blasting. So I had to spend far too long blowing out all the bolt holes with compressed air and covering my workshop in the sandy stuff so that I didn't strip more bolts than I already had. But eventually I did get it looking more like an engine and reassembled the heads with their camshafts so that I could mock up the next steps. At the moment I'm realizing that I might have bitten off more than I can chew. I mean, my to-do list is very straightforward. I need to make a wooden base, which I can now check off, attach the engine to the base, attach the glass to everything, and then add lights. But in reality, it's not quite so straightforward. How do you attach an engine to a piece of wood? That's not exactly what it was designed to do. It was designed to be mounted in an engine, not to a piece of wood. 
You can't just use wood glue. Although trust me, I have considered it. Fortunately, a stroke of genius wasn't far off. Since I've dismissed the sump of its duties, the threads for the sump bolts are now up for grabs. But I first had to figure out how to get its random bolt pattern onto my wooden base without messing it up, since I only have the one base. I'm no engineer, so please don't tell me if there's an easier way to do this. But I gave tracing the bolt pattern onto a piece of paper a try. I even put some bolts in so it wouldn't move around on me, and it seemed to work on my practice piece. Since there won't be any force on the engine, some bolts should be strong enough. And I figure 4 or 5 bolts should be enough. But we'll only know when we start to assemble it properly. So I do have some toughened coffee table glass right here and ready to go, hanging out with the supermoto. I just need to figure out how to attach it to everything. My inspiration photo uses galvanized plumbing pipes, so I'm going to go the same route. Steampunk isn't usually my favorite look, but for some reason I love this. The coffee tables with just engine blocks look a bit bland in my opinion. They need something like piping to make it look more complete. After a bit of rocket science measuring, I went shopping for just a few plumbing supplies. Something I've never done before. I'll skip the next few hours of me contemplating string theory and every conceivable pipe combination possible and just show you the final form that goes like this. It starts from the bottom with a flange. flange. Then we have a 20 cm pipe followed by a T-junction. There's a short pipe to connect another T-junction and then a mixture of male and female joins to get the top cap as close to the height of the cam gear as possible. We then need four of those pillars so we have one for each corner of the table. The top T-junction is then used to connect two of the pillars we just made together with a 30 cm pipe. And the lower T-junction houses two elbow joints with some connecting pieces, which is where we'll have lights protrude from in the end. With almost everything planned out, I drilled the final holes for the flange bolts and wiring, touched up the stain that I'd already scuffed up, and finally bolted the base to the motor, which was already stronger and heavier than it deserves to be. And I even managed to bolt down my piping structures without splitting my base. So as you can see, in the end, I committed to having the cylinder heads attached, because without them, the V-shape just wasn't very distinctive with my tiny little 400cc cylinders. And it was definitely the right choice. This looks brilliant. Without them, it was kind of insignificant. And you might have also noticed that I gave up on my idea of mounting the engine at an angle so that the cylinder heads were level. Remember, it's out of a motorcycle frame, so it's leaning forwards ever so slightly. But I realized once I put it down on the base that if the bottom of the engine isn't flush with the base, and this line where the cases join isn't level, it kind of looks strange. But now for some lights. I'm even less of an electrician than I am a carpenter, which is saying something. Electricity just confuses the hell out of me. But I do love lights and I think they'll make this look 10 times better, so we'll give it a try. I've got four of these hipster light bulbs with the cool filaments, one for each pillar. There's no point mounting lights inside the cylinders anymore because now they're sealed off so you won't even see them. I did buy one to mount on the base inside the engine only to discover that there's not enough height in there for a bulb. So we're sticking with exposed lights. And so began the worst part of this project, wiring. I first glued the base of the light bulb holders to the elbow joints that I'd removed. And while that dried, I became an electrician. If you look very closely, you'll notice that all of these shots are cherry picked so that you can't see how good of an electromagician I really am. I didn't wire them in series or parallel, but instead in my own proprietary system that's far too complicated for you to understand. But let's just say it worked.
Finally, I wanted to bolt the connecting rods to the crossbar so that the pistons could help support the glass. However, the diameter of the con rods was slightly bigger than the pipes, so I had to fabricate my own spacers to get the job done. And obviously, I left the light bulbs for last because I knew I'd break them. So this is it. I now have a V4 motorcycle engine on display in my living room and a place to put my coffee. That's the dream. I really do love how this has turned out, but I've never had so many challenges on a single project before. I've also never visited so many hardware stores in the space of a month. So please consider sharing this video with someone that would appreciate it because it took way more time, effort and money than I originally planned on. Maybe you could see if that super thanks button works or become a member, I don't know. The inspiration photo that I keep showing you is currently selling for $9,000. But obviously I'm not that greedy. I'd take half that. And at least then I will have gotten half my money back. But in all seriousness, I keep finding myself just staring at it. It's so cool seeing the fully built heads with cams and valve springs, the beautiful V-shape and castings for their various parts right in my own living room. The cases are bolted together from the inside, so no bolts are visible. And the warm tones from the wood and lights accentuate the engine and pipes beautifully. Of course, there is something I have to address. Because in the first video, I said this. Because ultimately, if this isn't structural in some aspect, there's no point in having an engine in your coffee table. However, as you can see, I did have to re-evaluate my expectations because although the glass is very close to that cam gear and technically the pistons are helping to support the weight of the glass, they're not really structural, are they? It's the same as all the brilliant ideas that you guys came up with in the last video, like adding lights in the cylinders that simulate the firing order or adding motors to get different parts of the engine to spin. They're all brilliant ideas, but more challenging when you've never done them before, especially on a deadline. And ultimately, I didn't want to stray too far away from the original idea. Let me know what you think of my V4 coffee table and what I should build next. Have you built anything similar? But anyway, I'll see you on the next ride.